Hello and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. It's one of a short series of videos which we're looking at layout on the VLE and this particular video looks at the way you can lay out individual content areas. Now this is an example of a content area, it's a section of a VLE site and on this particular section is where I've been providing the um, lecture notes and the, and the session materials. There are two types of layout for this area. The first type is item based where we have a series of items and the second type is folder based. Now the item based layout has some very common elements all the way throughout and these are designed for two reasons. First of all to make the content easy to find and the second reason is to make the content easy to engage with. Now we need to make things easy to find. We are not assessing students on their ability to find information on the VLE. And the VLE is the first point that students go to to access this information. We provide their lecture notes in advance on the VLE. So if they can't find those lecture notes, they're not going to be able to engage with the lecture notes and not going to be engaged with the session. So actually making this content very straightforward is a, is a key part of the use of the VLE. And it's actually something that I think can improve attendance potentially as well, as I'll discuss later on. So within an item, every item has some key elements. The first one is the title and you can see here this title has very clearly the week number at the start and then the title of that session. Numbered sequences are particularly useful where you have a student using a screen reader. That's a piece of software which changes what's on the screen into a speech output. So visually impaired students use screen readers and some dyslexic students will also use screen readers as well. It's also useful for students who are using screen magnifiers and that's where the screen, part of the screen is blown up but it's very difficult to relate different parts of the screen when that's the case because you're only looking at a very small proportion. And of course it's useful for everyone to find out where they are in the module as a whole. You know, in week six for example they've had a chance to look at previous week's worth of material and they can then relate it to the next week and then see how that's going to relate onwards. That, part of a sequence of learning going on through a whole module. So the numbers really help for that, so do number your stuff. And weeks uh, is the way to number it. Um, sessions, is it can be quite confusing. Um, in, there's just a few examples where sessions actually work better, but for the majority of cases, weeks are the way to number and order your content. Then we have the link to the slides themselves, and then we have the description below. Now for this description, I've added in the learning outcomes or I can add in the general overview of the content of that session. I've done this here, and it might always already be in the module outline, but I've done this here because at this point, this is where the students are going to download the lecture notes. And here I can remind them quite clearly the purpose and the context for the lecture. If we put this in the context of a model which looks at preparation, action and reflection, Preparation here allows the students to establish what they're going to be learning and with that knowledge they'll be more inclined to um, look at the slides, to work out whether the slides fulfil those um, learning aims and obviously they won't in their entirety. No slides should really give them all the information they need. They should come to the, the session and then do, and some activities in the session will find out more. Then in the session, that's the doing part, that's the action part where they're actually attending, they're engaging with the lecture, they're engaging with the content. And then afterwards, after the lecture, they can come back to this page. They can look again at those learning objectives, that list of content. And that list of content tells them what they should have learnt by the end of that session. And if they haven't, when they reflect back on it, they can then follow up with their own private study, hopefully looking at the additional resources from the reading list. So actually that little bit of extra information there could go a long way to improving the student's engagement with the module. And this information isn't new. It will be in module outlines. And if it's not there, it will be in the first slide of your presentations. And you can just take that first slide of your presentation, which outlines what the students be learning in that session, and just take the text and put it into that space. It's about reinforcement here of the learning objectives and the content they're expecting the students to learn. And then through continually doing this, the students can con continually judge whether they've met those learning objectives or not. So that's the first model there using items. And that item model will actually feature in the next 
structure which is based around folders and here this folder structure adopts a similar model by having a numbered uh, sequence which helps students to follow their way through the site. Now the folder structure is particularly useful where if you've got a lot of items like this perhaps you've got a lot of items where the description is very long instead of trying to present all that information at once on the screen what you're doing there is you're actually reducing the likelihood of that being read by the student. By presenting too much the students won't read it and this is actually comes from usability studies of the way that people engage with the web and you'll be the same I'm sure if you look at a website you don't read everything you just hone in or try to hone in on what's relevant to you you're sniffing out uh, the key points so if you've got a lot of detail on your one page then a lot of it's going to be missed so by using a folder structure you can hide a lot of that detail until the student actually wants to focus their attention on it and using the folder structure allows you to do that. So with, within a folder, let's just have a quick look in here, you can see that I've actually started my folder with um, a, a, aim of, a learning aim for the week and the learning objectives for that week. I've then created another item which will be the, le the lecture slides for example, and I've got an additional resource that follows underneath. So in the folders, you've actually got an opportunity there to bring together the lecture, the seminar, and additional resources and in this space you can provide the explicit link between each of those providing that link between those and potentially what students are also doing in the independent study or in online activities bridging those links between online independent act independent study and in class activity actually makes the module feel more as a whole and Ideally, within each week anyway, you should be linking as to what's gone previously and what's going to come up next. This is particularly important when you're doing team teaching because often some of the criticisms we get of team teaching is where every week is seen quite separate from the previous. So finding a way of sort of bringing everything together within a week and then linking those between the weeks, and particularly with an overall context for the module, is going to be important. So that introduction area there can actually be used for that. It could be saying, well, this particular week is relevant to the module because you would have seen in previous weeks this, and now we're going into more detail, or this is how the, this, this particular week builds upon it, or is different from the previous weeks. So you can use that area to introduce the, uh, the module. And because the VLE is the first place that students will engage with the material, because they download the lecture notes from here, and they will revisit the VLE when they relook at the lecture notes later on, Having that information there could encourage engagement of the learning materials. So here is a folder structure. Let me just show you now how we can create a folder structure. So I'm going to go back to the sessions area and I've got my edit mode on at the top already. You can see that at the very top right. To create a folder, go to build content, content folder. Put the name of the folder at the top. So let's create one for week three. And this bit here, this is the description of the folder. This is not the content that sits within the folder. So leave this blank and then click Submit. Now you can see I've got my week three link go into the folder. And here is where I start adding item. So I go build content item and I can put in my introduction to week three. Week three. OK, and I can put in uh, overall aim, learning objectives, and how this content relates to the module as a whole. That can go into my introduction. I can create another item, and this is going to be my slides. I can put my summary of content in the description, browse my computer, and upload my slides. and I can continue within this folder as I see fit with different um, items. So what I would do is one item relates all to the lecture, perhaps another item relates everything to do with the seminar, another item relates everything to do with a learning activity or some additional readings afterwards. So that all goes in there. So if I go back now to my sessions area, I can see I've got two folders there and you can see how that could progress onwards. Now you might at this point by thinking, well, oh, there's a lot of work here. Well, there isn't really. All this information you have already, you have that description, you have that learning outcomes and the content of the, of the lecture already within module outlines. And if you don't have it within a module outline, you'll have it uh, on the first slide of your presentations. 
you know, the one that you, where you start off your session by, this is what we're going to be doing today, and then you go and do it, you know, standard sort of lecture structure. That slide there, just copy the text out of it, put it into that section, and that'd be fine. So, as I said, you might be wondering, well, how, does this actually make an impact with students? And I can tell you now it does, and we've got evidence to prove that within the department. On every module evaluation form, uh, there's a question which asks students to agree or disagree with the statement, use of the VLE has supported my learning understanding of this module. And for most of the department, this hovers somewhere around the neither mark, the neither or slightly agree mark, um, more often not closer to neither or in some cases just below that. So students don't see the VLE as actually supporting their learning understanding of the module. So all the effort they were putting into this seems to be sort of wasted. We're not really taking advantage of the opportunity that we have in front of us. Here, in this module here, this is uh, the old ISRM uh, module. In this particular module here, we have a nice clear structure, numbered sessions. Ideally, this would be weeks. There's a nice title at the top that relates to the actual title of the lecture. We have the link to the lecture slides. And here, this is all this is, is copied straight off the module outline and gives an overview of that lecture and why it's important and why it relates to the module as a whole. The level of agreement for the statement, the VLE has supported my learning and understanding of this module, it was at the level of almost everyone saying strongly agree. And there's nothing special about this site at all. All it is is a list of the sessions and links to lecture slides. The only difference is this site has a clear structure and it has this extra information here um, about what's actually going to be in the lecture. And yet for some reason the students feel that this has supported their learning understanding a considerable amount. So I'll leave that with you. Take from that what you will and if you want any advice then do give me a shout.